we usually talk at the beginning when we introduce our curriculum about how the capstone is literally that, the capstone to your curriculum. This is your chance to take all the coursework you've taken uh, and apply it to a real life problem, but also integrate it. So we do integration because a lot of us have PhDs in public administration. We work in the area. We can see how a lot of the subjects cross and match up. But this is where it's your chance uh, to apply that coursework, again, to an applied problem. So it's four credits. Um, it is a lot of work. But one of the thing, benefits of a capstone is you've got a calling card uh, for whether you want to advance in your career or even applying for a job to say, hey, look what I've done. And uh, I can tell you, being out of graduate school for a number of years now, some of my fondest memories are of working in groups or working on a capstone where I can really show this is, what I, this is a, a legitimate product. Not just a homework assignment, but something that I put some creative thought in, some sustained effort uh, over a semester to say this is the results of my work. So we, as you could tell, I'm making the sales pitch, right? It's worth your time uh, and investment and energy into doing something positive for yourself um, and something that's uh, going to help you all in the long run in your career. So again, applied uh, and integrative. Um, so let me see what else I want to say. Um, <clears throat> we are this year uh, moving all of the capstones into a box uh, file. So we'll send out directions to all of you in case you want to take a look at uh, some previous examples. Um, and because uh, sometimes there's really high expectations, all the work I got to do, uh, um, and I'm, you know, maybe, maybe I don't really have to do too much. This kind of gives you a kind of a standard of what you're trying to achieve. Um, so, okay, so we'll send that out as an email. Um, we also have, let's see if I have it here. Uh, capstone. So this is the capstone requirements, and you know this gives all the legal language and all the contract language that we hope to set up with you. But the main thing that I want to get across here, and you can follow up again with the with the capstone handout, is we used to have these things called comprehensive examinations for the MAs. It did not work, right? Basically, it was a retest of what you already took as a test in your class. We weren't very happy with the results, and it made students crazy studying for it because literally you could be, uh, you know, you could be accountable for a whole lot of things. So in its place, we came up with these capstones, and for the MAs, this now serves as your check from the grad graduate school saying you've completed all the requirements for the for the curriculum. So now we have a capstone which is far superior than the comprehensive examinations, but. We still have to have some kind of an examination uh, that we have to turn in, and it's married up to the capstone. And so what you have is a series of questions. If I can get this thing to scroll down. Let's see. Uh, a series of questions. Here it is. So this, we could talk about that later. But here's a series of capstone questions that you're uh, going to be responsible for. And anybody, really, in any of the capstones are going to be responsible for. So first one is define your problem. That's any good exercise, right? Um, look at what's been done before, any kind of reports that have done before. <clears throat> uh, you will also be responsible for uh, your methodology, how you plan to deal with that problem. So this brings in the methodology. Uh, and the methodology doesn't have necessarily have to be quantitative. It could be uh, any kind of systematic way to evaluate a problem. Um, and then obviously we say, what are the alternatives and how are you going to investigate those? Now the interesting thing here is this is kind of a standard thing that we teach over and over in our classes. Nothing surprising about the logic of this. This is also the logical structure that uh, most of your capstones, are, your capstones are going to have as well. So as you're going through the course, you are, in essence, going to be doing this. So it's a really a way to pull you forward and to think about that. So that midterm, you're already thinking about what your capstone is going to start to look like towards the end. So we've married the two up. We don't have a separate examination now. Our capstone really now really serves uh, as uh, instead of that comprehensive examination. Okay? So MAs and MPAs will be taking this examination. For the MAs, this serves as their uh, graduate school requirement that some kind of test be taken. Okay. So that, that's usually a point of confusion. I just want to make sure that's that clear to people. OK. 
Okay. So <clears throat> everybody's going to take this exam um, one way or another. Uh, it's just for the MAs, it counts a little different, right? Because MPAs don't need that graduate stu uh, stu school checkoff, but the MAs do, right? So we eliminate the comprehensive exam. Your capstone, this examination basically is just getting you to think again in a more systematic fashion about the project you're already doing, okay? And that's detailed here below, okay? Um, <clears throat> I talked about box, right? Okay, um, so that's, so that's kind of an, or, uh, uh, <clears throat> an orientation or introduction for me. I'm now going to turn it over to my colleagues, and they're going to talk briefly about what they're planning in the capstone and what you can expect uh, to get out of it. What, so this will give you a chance. So this orientation or, uh, is primarily introduction, but also give you a chance to meet and hear the instructors for the first time. They are all too willing to have follow-up uh, calls or emails about their subject. They're all enthused about their projects. Uh, they all want to have students be excited about it and participate. So this is kind of a, a first, here's what I'm thinking of, but definitely feel free to contact them afterwards. And uh, once they've had a chance to talk, um, you know, we can open up for questions. Unless somebody has a question about anything I talked about just now. Yes, sir. <laughs> I need a B. Uh, if you get anything less than a B, you have to take it over again. Uh, but you only get two shots at the apple. Okay? It doesn't happen very often, but no incompletes. No incompletes. <laughs> that was a good question. Any more questions? <laughs> yeah. Is there a grading rubric for the exam, or is it just pass fail? Uh, pass fail. Yeah. So we're uh, a committee reviews the MA uh, examinations. So, so your instructor and someone else uh, both look at it. As soon as your capstone, your ex your midterm assessment is over, a committee meets, they talk about it, it's pass-fail, um, and we go from there. If there's any problems, we usually talk to the student, um, but uh, so we can get our, become clear about what the next steps are. Like yes, still? that's uh, translating to what Rob just said, yeah, 30% yeah. of your grade will be yeah. for, the, for, for the course, yeah. but then there's a pass-fail for the graduate school in terms of your test, in terms of their requirements. Mm 